Let not their fall, but travail therein till thou feelst list. For at the first time when thou dost it, thou findest but a darkness, and as it were a cloud of unknowing. Thou knowest not what, saving that thou feelest in thy will a naked intent unto God. This darkness and this cloud is, however, thou dost betwixt thee and thy God, and letteth thee that thou mayest neither see them clearly by light of understanding in thy reason, nor feel him sweetness of love in thy affection. Those words come from uh, the famous uh, anonymous text from the late 14th century, The Cloud of Unknowing, um, written by uh, an English mystic, and it's considered a, a classic of Christian mysticism um, with Neoplatonic thought mixed in with Christianity. And it's essentially um, a meditation on the story of Martha and Mary in, in the Bible, where Jesus goes to the house of Martha and Mary. And um, Mary sits at his feet and listens and Martha works. And the writer argues that it's there are two paths for a Christian in life, the path of active work and the path of contemplation. And in The Cloud of Unknowing, he talks about the path of contemplation, whereby God is like a cloud above us, a cloud of unknowing. And what we have to do is not through our works, but it's through accepting our unknowing and thrusting our head into the cloud that we can catch a glimpse of God. I'm talking about the cloud of unknowing because the place where I visited today is probably connected with it. Like I say, we don't know who wrote it. It's an anonymous writer, but they know, scholars know from the accent of his, his words, he was a monk probably a Carthusian monk, and most likely from the East Midlands. And so therefore the most likely place that that anonymous writer came from and where he wrote the work is Beauvale Priory uh, in Nottinghamshire, because that was the only Carthusian house in the Midlands. So Beauvale Priory were, in Nottinghamshire was uh, opened in 1343 and closed in 1539 under the dissolution of the monasteries. Uh, it wasn't a big place. It was dedicated towards the Blessed Trinity and there was a prior and 12 monks. And the Carthusians were unusual and it was a very closed order, but they lived in separate cells. They didn't live communally and they very rarely left their cells apart from essential tasks. And they would spend their time studying and um, and in contemplation, very much as is argued in the, the Cloud of Unknowing. And uh, it was sent to be a, a great study for uh, a great center for the study of the English mystic Richard Rowley. Uh, and so again, that would fit in with the it being the home of the Cloud of uh, Unknowing as well. And um, he also made history because its final prior. Prior Robert Lawrence uh, went to London in 1535 to argue against the dissolution of his priory and was imprisoned and um, then murdered uh, by a hanging. And he, uh, he became one of the 40 English martyrs that were made saints in 1970. You can visit Beauvale Priory today and there's... In terms of like English priories, there's actually quite a lot left. There are the ruins of the, the priory building itself. But what's nice is the old monastery gatehouse is now a tea room. So you can go and have tea in some of the monastery buildings and then go and explore the ruins yourself. And when I went there, I just found it an immensely powerful and peaceful place. It's a gorgeous spot. I mean, the, the name means beautiful valley, and it really is a beautiful valley. And I had it to myself, and I went there, and I just sat in the Priory ruins and contemplated and looked up at the sky and imagined that cloud of unknowing above us all. So, yes, I cannot recommend anywhere more than Beauvale Priory if you, uh, you want to contemplate and go back to the age of the medieval mystic. This is Uncle Troubling Matt. Keep travelling. Thank you.
Oh, oh, oh.